it's as, as, as I expected. So in the situation where you know, most of us in our heart of hearts really think there is actually metastatic disease, we're just not seeing it on these less sensitive scans, and we know that the drug preclinically as well as in early phase clinical trials was efficacious and safe in non-randomized trials. It's a zero surprise to me, and I think most people, that they were able to delay the time until metastatic disease was really visible compared to placebo. So that, I don't think that's a big surprise to, to many people, um, you know, with PSA declines and, and longer time to other progression besides, um, besides PSA. Um, you know, I, I think there's an interesting trend for overall survival. You know, I think that at a glance, you know, I, I think it was reasonably presented and, and subsequently discussed, but that p-value at a glance looks significant and it's too early to say there's not enough events. So, um, so similar to the other two drugs in this particular space, I would say all three prolong the time to metastatic CRPC, and all three have a trend for overall survival. Can't really compare across clinical trials, but what is intriguing is at least the theory that there's less CNS penetration and less of that toxicity. The numbers appear different, but again, just like we can't really compare the hazard ratios or, or the PSA changes or anything else, maybe it's a different patient population that was not going to get um, C, you know, CNS toxicity, falls, um, confusion, fatigue, et cetera. But it, it does look interesting in, the, in that regard. Um, as a doctor, I think it will be nice to have choices that are, that are out there. Um, so I don't know if this drug is going to get approved for this indication, but I hope so because I'd like to have some choices.